All right, I think we're live. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for the live stream this evening. In last week's video, I tested out the Mink Toner Ink Pen with somewhat mixed results. I didn't have much luck with the first pen that I purchased probably about a year or so ago, but I did get pretty good results with the second pen that I purchased, and that was the one that I used mainly in the video last week. Um, and going by the reviews of this product on Amazon and the emails and the comments that I've received about it, uh, the Mink Toner Ink Pens do seem to be a very hit or miss product. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make your own toner ink pens. I've been doing some preliminary testing with this method and my results so far have been just as good or better than the results that I had with the mink pens that I used in last week's video. I put the toner ink in quotes in the video title because there's not actually any toner involved in this method. I'm going to be using the mink reactive mist as my medium. And if you're not familiar with this product, I've actually done a couple of previous videos um, that have tested this out and I've used various techniques with it. It's actually, of all the mediums that I have, it's the most liquidy, so I figured that it would be a, a pretty good candidate for, for this. So, for my pens, I'm going to actually be using these Molotow empty pump markers. And I got two different sizes. They come in a bunch of different sizes. Um, I got two of the smaller tips because I figured those would work best for what I would be using them for. Them for. So um, the, one of the ones, uh, one of the pens is the two millimeter round tip. And then the other one is the one millimeter brush tip. And this is called a soft liner. And I really like this one because it, it does sort of have like a brush tip. It doesn't have individual bristles or anything, but I like it um, because if you're a letterer or anyone who wants to have, you know, different, different weights on your upstrokes and your downstrokes, I figured this would be a good option. So we're going to try out both of these. So... First, we're gonna do the two millimeter round tip. And I'm gonna get one of these Mink Reactive Pens. So you can see, you can see the tip size on this. And this two millimeter round tip is actually, I felt, pretty similar size to this. So I figured this would be the closest um, of the two uh, pens that I'm gonna try. This is the closest to being like the tip of the Mink Toner Ink Pen. So first what I wanna do is I'm gonna pop this cap back on and then this top part twists off. So I'm going to unscrew this. And when I do that, the brush uh, or the uh, pen tip and everything comes, comes out in this part. And then we have a little area, you can see it's got a little, a little piece that sticks out a little bit there. And what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to take this off. And so I have a butter knife, I'm gonna use a butter knife to do this. And I just wanna slide that into the groove here and then pull that out. So that part comes out. And inside is one of these little balls that you often find in paint pens. So, um, I'm actually gonna put that back in there. And what I would do if I were filling this one up, and I already have one pre-made, so I'm not gonna fill this one, but basically what I did to fill the one that I already have is I unscrewed the top of the mist bottle, and then I just carefully took it and poured it into the empty paint marker. And you wanna be careful when you're doing this. You definitely wanna keep some damp paper towels or baby wipes or something on hand because at least for me, this did not hold as much as I thought that it would. So uh, it filled up very quickly and I ended up having a little bit run over the top. But uh, 
if you have a damp paper towel, it cleans up really easily. So anyway, after you filled it up, you'll just pop this back in, press it back in tightly, and then you just wanna screw the top on like this again. And then you take it out. And this is also like the Mink Reactive uh, Toner Ink Pen in that to get it started, you basically have to depress that little that tip, if you can see it, it depresses like this. So you wanna depress that on the surface and it usually takes a couple minutes to get going. But once that the medium gets flowing, I've found that it just flows very nicely. And unlike with the Mink Reactive Pen, I didn't find myself having to redepress the tip to get it flowing smoothly again. It just continued to flow smoothly and I didn't really have to depress that tip to get it going again. It just, the medium kept coming out very smoothly. So, like I said, here is the one that I already have filled. And I'll, I'll preface this by saying that you're probably not, when I draw on the surfaces, you're probably not going to be able to see this well because this is, it's sort of like a milky translucent. And what I had wanted to do and what I thought about doing was actually taking some dye ink or something and just putting a drop in there to tint it so I'd be able to see where I was drawing because it can be difficult. Uh, but I, I didn't want to take a chance on that ink interfering with my results. So for this one, I just left it clear as it is. Keith asks, you poured it freehand. I did pour it freehand and I was very, very careful and I actually, I had, I have shaky hands naturally so I just, I kept, you know, my elbows down and I just kept as still as I could and I got very lucky. So if I can do it, even if you have a little bit of shaky hands and I do have shaky hands, you can do it. Just, just be very careful and like I said, just keep uh, a damp paper towel or a baby wipe or something on hand just in case you spill a little. All right, so I'm going to be using the same surfaces that I did in last week's video, and that those are the I'm I'm using the C line transparency film uh, for laser printers, and you can see this comes in eight and a half by eleven sheets, and it's it's totally clear acetate. And because this is made for laser printers, if you have a laser printer, you can just print right on this. And um, I think I mentioned earlier, but maybe not, if you click on the little, there's a little dot with a circle with an eye in it on the top right of your screen if you mouse over the video. If you click on that, uh, you'll see a playlist of all of the videos that I've made for foiling techniques and everything like that. And there are videos where I show you how to laser print on this and I, I get great foiling results with this. Uh, next, I'll be using the Duralar. This is the 0.005 matte. I, I actually, this is an acetate alternative and it looks a lot like vellum, but it's a lot smoother than any of the vellums that I've tried. And I get fantastic foiling results on this. I really like the surface. And I also like the Dorlar for cutting stencils with my Silhouette Cameo. So it serves multiple purposes. So even though it is a little bit pricier for this tablet, it's totally worth it if you have a die cutting machine or you do a lot of foiling. And lastly, I'll just be using my favorite, one of my favorite card stocks for foiling, and that is the Hammer Mill Digital Color Copy 80 Pound. All of the uh, links to all of the supplies that I'm going to be using for this are in the description area below. So you can check that out and click on those to find out exactly what these products are about. All right, so I have a piece of the cardstock right here and I'm going to, again, I wanna apologize because you're probably not gonna be able to see this very clearly, but I am gonna start drawing on this piece of cardstock and I'm just going to draw hello and I wish you could see this because I have found that the maybe you can I'm gonna try to angle it so 
there. I think you might be able to see it from that angle you can see. And it does flow very smoothly as you're drawing with it. I'm just going to draw some little leaves up here. And I like how nice the flow on this is. Uh, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago that with the mink pen, one of the things is every minute or two, when things start to get streaky, you'll have to redepress the tip. And it's not really a big deal to do that. Um, but it's, I, I like that this has very nice flow and I don't really find myself having to depress that tip to get the flow going again, like I did with the mink pen. So that's just like a little thing, but but I like that this has very nice flow. So again, you probably cannot see it that well, maybe a little bit at that angle. And this does take, it takes a couple of minutes to dry on the cardstock. It takes somewhat longer on both the transparency um, or the acetate and on the Duralar because they're smoother, glossier surfaces. So, I'm going to draw on the acetate, and I will say on the acetate, if there is any streakiness, it's probably going to come on the acetate. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is. It's probably just because of the surface and the, the medium, for whatever reason, it just, it might get a little bit streaky on there, but you can always draw over any areas that you notice might be streaky. So I'm just going to quickly draw in some little leaves like I did before, and a little heart down here. I'm going to fill that in, and I'm not sure, you might be able to see that a little bit when I angle it. You can see that there's something on there. Okay. So finally I'm just going to do the, the Duralar here. And the flow is very smooth also on the Duralar. You might be able to see it a little better when I angle it here. Since the, the Duralar is kind of a matte surface, I feel like you probably have the best chance of seeing there. I think if I angle it like that, you might be able to see it a little bit. So you can see that it is actually writing on there. All right, so again, very quickly, I'm just gonna do some leaves, and then a little heart down here, and just fill that in. Maybe a little dot pattern up here, just random. Okay. So again, the both the acetate and the Duralar take a little bit longer to dry, you know, maybe five minutes or so. Um, and you want to make sure that they are completely dry before you run them through the foiling machine because if you don't, you tend to get, what happens is because the medium is sitting on the surface, if it's not completely dry and you put the foil on top of it and you run it through the mink, it'll sort of spooge out that medium as it runs through the machine because it's pressing on it and it can ruin your design. So just make sure that it's completely dry before you, you foil it and running, run it through the machine. So I already have some of each that are completely dry. So I have the cardstock piece that I drew on, um, the Duralar piece, and the acetate. And test tonight, I'm going to use the Deco Foil Rose Gold and the mink reactive foil in rose gold. And I wanted to use the regular gold like I did last week, but as I was testing, because I was testing a lot, I actually ended up running out of the mink reactive foil in gold. So I wanted to use the similar colors for both of the brands, so I just switched over to the rose gold. Keith, yes, the Duralar is awesome. I love this stuff. All right, so I'm going to turn my mink on and then I'm just going to press the button until it's up on setting four. And setting four is the heat setting that I use for just about everything that I do. 
this, this setting works well for me. And it, it'll take a couple minutes. I actually should have turned the mink on before, but I totally forgot. So, all right, so in the meantime, these will dry out pretty well. And, you know, these, these mink mediums, they're actually, especially the reactive mist and there's reactive paint as well, they're kind of more glue-like. So um, when they do dry, you might still notice like a, just a slight tackiness and that's totally okay just as long as they're not wet and you're you can't smear them or anything like that but they might be a little bit tacky all right so my machine is ready and as for my carrier sheet i'm just going to use a piece of folded printer paper i just folded it in half so first i'm going to do the let's see i'm going to do the mink I have to get a piece of size that's going to fit this piece of hard stock. I'm going to get the mink. This is the mink reactive foil in the rose gold. So I'm just going to put the foil shiny side up over that piece of card stock. And then, oops, I might have shifted around there. Okay. And then I'm going to slide that into the mink and run it through. And it usually only takes about a minute or so to do that. So I'm just going to set these aside so I'm not knocking these all over, smearing them since they're quite dry. Okay, so it's coming out the other side. It's just about done. All right, so it's going to give it a few seconds until it cools off. You can probably already see the outline of Hello and everything where it has adhered. So it's pretty cool now. All right, so you can see that these results are pretty good. The only place where I didn't get um, complete coverage here is in this heart. And I have to be honest with you, this is totally my fault because whenever I was drawing the heart and color coloring it in, I noticed that I missed a spot and it dried <laughs> a little bit. And then I went back and tried to fix it and I just ended up smearing it around. So that's probably why that's streaky. So what you can do if that happens is you can just go back in. I'm just gonna depress that. And you can just color over the areas that didn't get filled in. And let's see if there's like a little, yes, there is a little extra area on this. And what you can do is you can just stick it back into your carrier sheet and you can run it through again. So yeah, I guess that is a tip. If you notice that you, uh, after the fact that you missed an area and uh, you go back to color it in, because the, 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 the mist medium does actually have some viscosity, if you go back in and try to color it in and it's not completely dry, you probably will just smear it around and move it around and then you'll, you'll get streaky results like you just saw there. Okay. And you know what? I totally ruined it because I forgot my own rule. <laughs> I forgot my own rule to let it completely dry before running it through. So this is a this is a perfect example of what happens if you don't let it completely dry before you run it through. You can see that when it ran through, it just sort of got pressed out and smeared and ruined. But on the upside, the areas that didn't have coverage before seem to have coverage now. So I'm very sorry about that. I broke my own rule. I did not, I totally forgot and didn't wait until it completely dried. Um, so definitely wait until it's completely dry before running it through again. Okay, so we're gonna move on now. We're gonna do the acetate. And this is again with 
the mink reactive foil in rose gold. So we'll just put the cover of everything that I drew with the rose gold reactive foil, put it into the carrier sheet, and then we're going to run it. It only takes a minute, two minutes. It's pretty quick. All right, so it's about halfway through now, coming out the other end. All right, so it's just about done here. So I'm gonna take it, it's a little bit warm. I'm gonna wait until it cools before peeling this off. Oh, and you know what? I did, um, I did miss a little bit at the top here that I had drawn on earlier because I didn't spot it. And so the foil didn't cover that. So I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit of that paper stuck to it when I ran it through. It's not a big deal, but that was my fault. I didn't choose a piece of foil that covered everything. All right, so let's peel this off. And again, these are very good results. This heart, I did not mess up. <laughs> so this one has really good coverage. I hope you can see that. And everything else that I drew also has very good coverage with this. Okay, so the final surface that we're going to foil, and this is just with the mink reactive foil in rose gold, we're going to do the Duralar. So let's put the foil over that shiny side up, stick it into our carrier sheet, which is just a folded piece of printer paper. And then we're gonna run that through. And again, it'll just take a minute. And if you have any questions or would like to see me do something that I'm not doing, uh, please just pop in on the chat and feel free to ask me. As long as I have the supplies on hand, I'll try out whatever you'd like me to. Okay, so this is just about done. Oop, a little bit of that already came off. We're gonna wait, it's just about cool here. Right, so now we're gonna peel that off and look at how good those results are. Those are great results, very good. I think the heart is a good indicator because this is a more, I wanted to color that in because it's a more solid space. So you can see that is that has really great coverage in there. Okay, so, the pen with the mink reactive ink in, or the mink reactive foil in rose gold worked out really great. So now we're gonna do all of the same surfaces, but this time we're going to use the deco foil in rose gold. So first we're gonna do the cardstock. I'm gonna grab a piece of the deco foil. And you can tell to the touch that the deco foil is just a little bit thicker than the mink reactive foil. And I, I honestly, I really like working with the deco foil. I find that it's easier to cut with scissors. So we're gonna run that through. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to find properly sized foil pieces for both of these other surfaces. I don't tend to cut the, the foil very uniformly. Okay. Maybe just I think that'll fit, will fit well on that. And then that will fit that. Okay. All right, so this is done and we're just gonna give it a few seconds to completely cool off here. Cool down. And then we're gonna peel that off. And you can see 
there is just a little bit of streakiness here. And that was, again, I'm sure user error, but what you can do, and I'm gonna try to remember this time that I have to let this dry completely before I run it through again. If you get, if you find that you're getting any streakiness, what you can do is you can just redraw over those areas. And this is one of the downsides to this being clear because you can't always see if something's streaky on the surface. So that's, you know, that's definitely one of the, the upsides of the Mink Reactive pen because it's black. The, the ink is black. So you can definitely see right away. So I'm gonna just let this, I'm gonna set this aside to dry. It should only take a couple of minutes and then I'll run it through again. So in the meantime, I'm going to run through, this is the acetate with the deco foil rose gold. Oh, Keith, do you mean the deco foil? Does it take longer to cool because it's a little bit thicker? I haven't really found that it does. Um, honestly, I usually don't wait until it's completely cool to peel it off. And in last week's video, I think it was Mary who in the chat suggested that I wait until it was cool. And I definitely saw an improvement with the mink reactive foil when I let it cool. But with the deco foil, I was already getting really good results and I didn't need to necessarily let it cool the whole way. So I think it's to a certain extent, personal preference. Um, but I am letting these cool tonight in, in the hopes of getting the best results possible here. All right, so it's just about cool already. Oh, I missed, my foil was not long enough. So there we go. So again, these are really good results. There is a slight bit of streakiness in the leaves, but that, again, is, I think because, you know, because it is a clear, this is clear, it's hard, really hard to see, especially when you're drawing with the acetate. And if you're gonna get streakiness, it's most likely going to be on this acetate just because of the way that the reactive foil behaves on the acetate. So, but it's no big deal. And these results are still pretty darn good. The foil pretty much adhered everywhere where there was any of that medium. All right, so finally, we're gonna do the deco foil rose gold on the Duralar. So let's run this through. And let's check this out. Do I think that this is dry? Mm, maybe another minute and then we'll run this again. So by the time that the Duralar comes out, this will probably be dry enough that I can maybe try running it through again. Okay, so this is just about the way through. And again, just give it a couple seconds to cool down there. And it really doesn't take long. Okay, so we're gonna peel that off. And these results, also excellent. I think that the best results that I've had on, with both foils are on the Duralar. Again, you can see that heart, which is, I colored in. It's a more solid, solid shape, um, perfect coverage. It covered really, really well. All right, so we're gonna try rerunning this cardstock through. I had uh, some streakiness, so I wanted to, I, I, I drew, redrew over those areas with the, the Molotow pen that's filled with the reactive mist. I'm just gonna try running this through. I know, fingers crossed that is actually cool or dry the whole way because if it's not, we could have a mess again like we did, we did over here with this heart because I totally forgot to let it dry the whole way. All right, so it's just about through.
All right, so it's through and just wanna wait just a couple seconds until it's cool here. All right, so you can see that any of the areas that previously had had any sort of streakiness have now been totally filled in because I just took the marker and just redrew over those areas. So it's really easy to do. You just need to make sure that it is dry before you run it through because I totally forgot when I did it on this one and you can see the mess that I got. It will just sort of spooge it out and it's a mess. All right, so I got great results with both of, with both the mink reactive foil and with the deco foil in rose gold. I do think probably I got my best, best results on the Duralar. That, that medium just, it, it really writes really smoothly and there's very even coverage over the surface of the, the Duralar, but the other two results are pretty darn good as well. So now what I wanna do is we're gonna back it up a little bit and we're going to fill this other marker. This is a brush tip, a little bit larger. The base is a little bit larger. The tip is pretty small. I really like this tip. Now, this is gonna be a surprise for all of us because I have not tried this out yet because I only have one of these pens. So I wanted to save it for the video. Um, so we're both gonna, we're all going to be surprised at the results here. So again, it has a top that you just, you know, you unscrew it. And then this is the nib. Oh, another thing about these Molotow pens is that as far as I can tell, um, just looking around, these do have re replaceable nibs. So if at some point the nib dries out, that medium dries out in the pen and you can't use it anymore, you can go and get a replacement nib and then just take the old, old dried out one out and then stick the new one in. So that's a great option to have. So again, we have, we need to get this off. Now I haven't needed a butter knife. This tends to come out pretty easily. So we're just gonna lift all of that out. And then we're gonna get the, this is the mink reactive mist. Oh, and you have the little, the little ball in there. So I have to remember to put that back in. And I'm gonna unscrew this cap. And then very carefully, I want to pour that into the marker. And I can see it coming up quickly. I'm not gonna fill it up the whole way because I don't want it to run over. Then I'm going to put the lid back on this. And because I already know that I get great results, or I got great results with just the, the regular clear liquid, I already know that it works, it's effective. What I'm going to do is what I wanted to do. Um, and I'm just going to take, I have this Distress Ink Re-Inker, re and I'm going to unscrew the, the cap here, and I'm just going to put one drop of that ink in there because I really want to tint it a bit so I can see where I'm writing as I'm writing. So I'm going to put that little shaker ball back in there. And then I'm going to put this housing back in, pop that back in like this. And I'm going to screw the top on. You can see that that, that dye ink has gone down there. So I'm going to just shake that up and you can see that it's turning blue. And I figured this shouldn't be a big deal that it's a little bit tinted because we're going to be foiling over it completely anyway. So, so this will just tint it enough that we can see while I'm writing with it. So I'm gonna get a piece of cardstock and take this cap off. Oh, what happened to my, oh, I forgot to stick my little nib back in. I thought I lost it. Okay, I'm gonna stick that back in there, actually. I'm not sure if that's gonna be in well, and I'm gonna unscrew this top and then stick that in there and then screw that back on. Okay, so to get this going, this tip depresses as well. It's kind of tricky though, because it's not, because it is more of like a brush tip. So I'm just gonna depress this down and it might take a minute or two, 
to get it going. Maybe I'll hold it down for a few seconds and see if that helps. I can see it starting to come down in. Okay. And that the tip seems to be built to be pretty resilient. I mean, I'm completely, I don't know if you can see when I'm pressing it down, it's going completely to the side, but it's writing itself again uh, whenever I lift the, the pen back up from the surface. Okay, so you can see it's coming down into the tip slowly here. I'm just gonna keep depressing this until it, so it's finally starting to come down into the brush part a little bit. Just gonna, I guess, smash that around is the technical term for it, and just smash this around as the ink comes down into that that tip. Right. All right. So that's that's nice. It's flowing now. So I'm just gonna push that down a few more times to get it going and then you can you should be able to see at least it's slightly tinted here so there we go all right so i don't since i only had one of these pens these markers i don't have any samples done yet so I'm going to have to make those now, and I'll just do – I'm not very good at the thicks and thins here. I'm still trying to get used to this brush. It is extremely flexible once you start writing with it. I'm hoping you can see as it's down on the surface, it is very flexible. So, I don't think I did a very good job with high there, but you should be able to sort of see it on the surface there. Okay, now I'm just gonna, I'm still trying to get that ink flowing smoothly, it, or the medium flowing smoothly. It doesn't seem to be going as smoothly as it was in the the round tip and that could just be that I'm, I'm not used to it yet so I'm gonna press it down some more it doesn't seem to be flowing as smoothly I'm not sure why I'm just going to – that brush tip is very flexible. I don't know if that – if using that ink made a difference. I mean, I wouldn't think that using one drop of the ink would really make a difference with the flow, but maybe the medium is more sensitive than I thought, or maybe it's just that I'm – I. I'm just starting to use this tip and I'm not really used to it. There we go. That's flowing pretty smoothly. We'll try drawing a heart here. All right, so you can see that it is slightly blue on the surface because of that ink. Let's get out the Duralar, since that has been a really good surface um, to work with with the other pen. Yeah, it definitely seems to be flowing much better on the Duralar. But it could just be because 
maybe it's not flowing as smoothly because I'm not used to this brush tip. And if I had more experience with it, it would go better. I'm just trying to color in the areas that aren't, that are sort of patchy. And it's patchy because of the way that I'm using the brush tip. It's not patchy because it's not coming out of the tip. All right. So I'm definitely getting better flow on the Duralar here. And it, you know, this could also be because I'm getting a little more practice with it. But it's definitely flowing pretty smoothly there. So I'm going to go back to the cardstock and see if it just doesn't seem to be flowing as smoothly on that cardstock. Let's try out the acetate. You're right, Keith. Keith says he thinks it might be a function of the tip being narrower too, and that could that could definitely be affecting it because it doesn't have as much space for that medium to come out of there. So it seems to be flowing pretty well on the acetate as well. Let's try drawing a little heart. Squiggle. I'll try to do like a thin and a thick, thin, thick. You know, the upstrokes and the downstrokes. So when you go down, you press more so it's thicker. All right, so you probably can't see it too well on there, even with that ink. Now we just want to dry things out so we can see what kind of results we're going to get when we run this through the foiling machine. So I know that you can, uh, you can dry the foiling or the, you can dry the reactive mist with a heat, a heat gun. I don't know that I want to try it. Well, you know, maybe I should, I mean, you can run it through the mink and that, that has pretty high heat. I just want to be able to dry this quickly. Okay. So I'm going to grab, I have my, heat gun over here. I'm just gonna quickly, this is kind of loud, so I apologize. I'm gonna quickly dry this. There's still some places where this is thicker that I where I don't think it's completely dry, but these areas, like this area where I drew, all has pretty light coverage, so I think that it's pretty dry there, so I'm gonna give it a try. Because I don't want to have to keep you here for another half an hour waiting for this to dry, so we're gonna this now, and this is the Mink Reactive Foil in Rose Gold, so I'm just gonna run this through. There's also an area on here that is not dry. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, Keith, I don't think you want to use the heat gun to dry your hair. You would burn yourself very, very badly. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to wait a couple seconds for this to cool down. Okay. All right, so you can see with this brush tip, you definitely get more of like a brushy, weathered kind of look. And I, this is, we're testing this together, so it could be that I just have to do more testing and I might get better with that brush tip and more used to it. Um, but the areas where the medium was, it definitely, you know, the foil definitely adhered there. So let's try with, let's try the Duralar with the deco foil and there is there are a couple of wet areas so I'm not sure how this is going to go so we're just going to run that through and then I think the last one I've got the acetate um we'll see how these results come out with the deco foil and whether they're better than the results that I had on the cardstock with the mink foil and then I'll see what I want to do from there All right, so it's just about through here, and now we just want to give it a few seconds to cool off. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to take, I'm going to get a pe another piece of foil ready, so this is still pretty warm here. So I'm going to peel that off, and actually these results are pretty darn good. I mean, for as bad as I am with this brush tip. These are, these are pretty good. Again, it's a very brushy look, but it's a brush tip, so that makes sense. Um, I, got, I tried to do very lightly over here and got pretty thin coverage. Okay, so um, I really like the results that I got with this. I feel the foil coverage is very, very good. So I'm going to try the piece of acetate with the deco foil as well. And again, I don't know if the results are better with the deco foil. I did have trouble um, getting that medium to flow really well on the cardstock, so that that was obviously an issue. So I think that I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely have to do more testing with this brush tip pen. The preliminary results are not bad, but I am having some difficulty working with this tip because it is extremely flexible. So it could just be a matter of me having to practice some more and get used to it. All right, so this is coming out the other end. Just about done. All right, so it's just about cool already. And now I'm just gonna peel this off. And again, this foil coverage is also really good with this. Um, it's just, you know, obviously, I am not very good with that brush tip. So, but the foil coverage is great on any of the areas where the medium did get on the surface. So the preliminary results for this are promising and I'm gonna to have to practice with this some more. Um, if I can improve my results and get used to this brush tip, I'll probably make another video uh, showing you that. But in the meantime, I definitely, I definitely like the results that I got with the two millimeter round tip. Um, you might want to put a drop of ink in there in order to tint it a little bit so you can see better when you're writing on surfaces, um, especially some a surface like acetate. It's, it's pretty hard to see when it's just in its natural clear state. But um, I definitely liked my results with this and I felt like the flow of the medium coming out of this tip was a lot more consistent than I got with either of the mink um, toner ink pens. And with this one, the preliminary results, you can see they're, they're pretty promising. It's just, I'm not, I don't, 
I just started using this tip about 10 minutes ago when I was testing it, so I haven't had a lot of experience. And in my experience, brush tips, you tend to need to practice a little bit more. So I'm gonna practice a little bit more with this. And if I can get better results, I will definitely keep you posted. All right, thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. If anyone has any questions now before I go, please feel free to type them up in the chat. I'll wait a minute and then check on the chat to see if any of you have any questions or would like me to try something else that I didn't try in the video. And while I'm waiting for that, I'll just show my, show my results again. These are results with the two millimeter round tip. So this is on the cardstock with the Mink Reactive Foil. And again, this was my mistake here because originally I, I had some um, streakiness in there and that was my own fault. Uh, so I, I went and I colored it in, but I broke my, my own rule or the rule of the reactive mist and it did not wait for it to completely dry before I ran it through again. So that's why it's like that. But otherwise the coverage is very, very good on the cardstock. It's also very good on the acetate. I missed this little spot up here and you can see the adhesive stuck to the paper. But again, that was my mistake. And the coverage is excellent on the Duralar. And with the Deco foil, the results were also excellent um, on all three surfaces. So here's the, here is the cardstock. You can see how nice those results are. Here is the acetate, also very good results. And the Duralar, I think with both of the brands of foil, I got my best results. Uh, with the Duralar. You can see this heart which is filled in. It's perfect coverage. Very good. All right. I don't see any additional questions. So again, thank you so much for joining me today, everyone. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it to be helpful. And consider subscribing to my channel to see more videos like this one. All right. Take care and I hope you'll tune in again soon.